I'm Naima, welcome back to my channel. About 18 months ago, after a yoga session, I started to feel faint and dizzy. As I walked home, my heart was racing faster and faster. By the time I got home, I felt as if I was about to pass out. Within three days, I was completely bedbound. I would go to A&E twice within that first month. This was the beginning of a condition that would change my life forever. I didn't know its name until recently. Postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome or POTS, which is a bit less of a mouthful. A form of dysautonomia that is prevalent after a post-viral infection and has increased in visibility since long COVID. I realized recently that even though I know my symptoms, I know how they feel within my body, I really don't know the condition that well at all. Over the last couple of weeks, I have been scouring the internet, watching videos, reading journal articles. And this video is a culmination of everything I found out. I'm not a doctor, so anything I say should not be construed as medical advice. This is an attempt for me as a patient to learn more about POTS. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new here. So first off, dysautonomia, this is a condition that impacts the autonomic nervous system. But what is that? I have heard it described as how we respond to the external environment, how we process any type of physical and psychological stress. The most common of autonomic disorders is POTS, but there are others like orthostatic hypertension, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, EDS, and fibromyalgia, for example. POTS puts your body in a fight or flight state. It makes you feel like you're never resting, digesting, or healing. Our nervous system is split into two systems that are both in balance all of the time. The parasympathetic, this is the rest and recover system, and the sympathetic, fight or flight. When the sympathetic nervous system is overactive and the parasympathetic nervous system is underactive, you can start to feel the following symptoms. Poor sleep, tachycardia, palpitations, chest pain, exercise intolerance, nausea, gastrointestinal disturbance, brain fog, dizziness, lightheadedness, weakness, blurred vision, fatigue, shortness of breath, headache, tremor, heaviness or swelled legs, and the list goes on. Most common are the cardiovascular symptoms listed above, like tachycardia. This to this day is still the most pronounced symptom that I have. When I first got ill, on standing, I could feel my heart racing. Climbing up the stairs, it would race more. And when I'd make a physical effort, picking up a bag or cooking, anything to do with moving around and exerting myself could generate an exaggerated response from my heart. And the cardiovascular issues for me often drive the other symptoms. It's still early days for long COVID, so we don't yet know why it's so good at prompting these POTS-like symptoms and other autonomic disorders. Also, it does not do this to everyone. And it seems there is a genetic component, a lifestyle component, the history of someone's stress and their ability to buffer stress. All of these things contribute to someone getting a condition like this. <laughs> can wax and wane. It can be consistent or it can be gradual. My condition has been all of those things at different points. At the beginning, I was very much stuck in the boom and bust cycle where I would have several days of severe symptoms followed by several weeks of less severe symptoms and it would yo-yo like this up and down. After lots of pacing, I went through months of it being consistent, only to have a relapse and then get back into that cycle. And now I'm getting back into more steady symptoms. There are a few things that can exacerbate POTS, like sitting, standing, exercise, carbohydrate, heat, and extreme temperatures in general, alcohol, caffeine. And there are a few things that can relieve it as well, like lying down, making behavioral changes and having consistency of behaviors. Sleeping, for many of us, the challenge is not getting to sleep, but it's getting restful sleep and waking up refreshed and having this tired and wired feeling. The good news is, once you're diagnosed, there are a lot of lifestyle changes that you can make and interventions that can help to alleviate your symptoms. But first, you've got to get that diagnosis. There are several different types of tests that you can do to get a diagnosis. The first one is an assessment of blood pressure 
and heart rate lying down and standing. The second one is a 10 minute stand test. The third one is a tilt table test. And lastly, a test to see how your body responds to exertion. These tests all work to assess your blood pressure and heart rate as you're exerting yourself. But because POTS has not been common until now, there can often be many misdiagnoses of this condition. The fact that these are vague symptoms that don't seem to have any relevance to each other at first, and that they don't produce abnormal functional tests, makes it very difficult to diagnose. Every time I would see a doctor, my test would come back normal, or there would be something abnormal that wasn't really relevant to my symptoms. This makes it really difficult to diagnose. Many patients with POTS may be thought to have a panic disorder, anxiety or chronic fatigue syndrome. There are also ways to determine whether you have this condition at home by measuring your blood pressure and heart rate from lying down to sitting to standing and noting down how you feel at each different point and, and presenting the results to your doctor. <laughs> internet I found lots of things that can be done at home and lifestyle changes that can be made to alleviate POTS like symptoms caused by COVID. I'm going to share the top 10 things that I found that have just kept coming up when I've been doing research into this area. Number one is increased fluid intake. Drinking two, three, four litres of water per day. Increased salt intake. This is to increase the amount of sodium in your diet and this can be added into food or it can be salt tablets, electrolytes, things like that. Compression clothing. Everything from socks, abdominal binders and stockings because compression of the lower body causes an increased blood return to the heart from the legs. And I know, like I said, some of the symptoms include swelling and problems with circulation, and this can really help to improve that. Breathing exercises, and this is to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Eating small meals, eating little and often instead of eating huge meals. Getting as much sleep as possible. Exercise, and there's some debate into this because one of the key symptoms of POTS is exercise intolerance. But starting exercise lying down and slowly building up to sitting and then standing over several months can really help to improve the condition. Reducing stress, easier said than done. Reducing caffeine. And then there are also a series of vitamins and minerals that can also help, like vitamin D, iron supplements, and others, which I will also include more information in the bar below. For a lot of people, these lifestyle changes can only go so far, but many of us will require medication as well. These include beta blockers to reduce the heart rate. Evabridine is something that kept coming up again and again, and this is for people who can't tolerate beta blockers. And SSRIs and ACE inhibitors are also another possible treatment option. You need to consult your doctor before taking any of these. I've learned so much from making this video and researching this topic about this very confusing illness and I've started applying many of these lifestyle changes already and I will continue to do so and I'll report back on how I'm finding it. I honestly feel that if I had known over a year ago there was an explanation for this mix of symptoms I knew that it was related to long Covid but if I had known what dysautonomia was, what POTS was, maybe I could have made some of these changes sooner. I'd love to hear what has helped you to navigate this illness and please leave a comment below to tell me anything that has been working for you and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in my next video.